eat and about all legend. Good morning. So we are back at the range, okay? And as promised, we've got an old World War II Mauser to have a go at. I might be here also, there's a couple of um, police guys here who are gonna be um, firing as well. So I'll make it a wee look at, see what they're firing. And these guys are on the um, SWAT team, basically. So we'll see what's going on with that. Here we go. Okay, ladies, so we're back with Joel today. He's going to explain the um, the Mauser to us. Um, old World War II rifle we're going to fire today. So he's going to go through it and let us know what it's all about. Yeah, g'day. Um, so this is a um, Swedish Mauser, chambered in 6.5 by 55 millimeter Swedish. Um, based off uh, a old Mauser design, designed by the Mauser brothers in Germany. Um, Mauser rifles were iconic around the world. Uh, used by uh, hundreds of countries um, and millions of these rifles were produced. This particular model was a Swedish model, one of the earlier models. Um, first model was developed in 1894, um, big long barrel straight bolt um, and then over the years it was developed. The particular rifle that we have here today was built in 1942 as part of the rearmament program um, in case of war. As you know, everyone should know, uh, Sweden was a neutral country during World War II. However, they saw everyone else around them was at war and decided to rearm as a part of their national defense in case someone wanted to um, invade them during the course of the war. Um, a bunch of these rifles were given to Finland as part of uh, war aid in or against the Russians. Um, but yeah, this rifle, you know, this particular rifle was built by Husqvarna in 1942. Uh, you can see some uh, markings here on the rifle denoting the year of manufacture and the manufacturer itself. Uh, sighted that to 600 meters. Um, beautiful rifle to shoot and we'll have some fun. Um, so when I first originally bought the rifle, there was some kit that came with it from the uh, first owner, um, including the original bandolier, uh, the bayonet and bayonet sheath the original sling, some stripper clips, some dummy rounds, um, and some of the cleaning and accessories. So some of the accessories that we have here is the original blank fire adapter. Um, originally these uh, rifles when used in training had porcelain wood rounds and they would shatter inside of this and so that's how you would simulate your firing um, brass catcher so that you wouldn't have to go around and clean up on the range. You could simply unhook this, hook it into the rifle, and the brass would be caught in the bag here so you wouldn't have to go around and clean up your brass after a range day. There's a few rifles need that today in the <laughs> modern warfare. And then uh, your bayonet. Uh, this bayonet is a bit unique. It's entirely steel construction. Um, has a plunger in order to hook into the rifle. So if we just come over to the rifle here. Yep, so you take your rifle, you take your bayonet, there's a little plunger hole just there that this plunger on the bottom will go into. Bayonet goes over the top. It's locked in. Sturdy construction. If you want to take it out you simply pull down on this, push forward, it comes off. Fix bayonet eh? Yes. So this is the uh, 6.5 by 55 millimeter round, developed in Sweden in 1894, um, to be paired with this rifle, or an older version of this rifle. Um, very popular round in Europe and North America, um, due to how uh, easy it is to shoot, um, very accurate. Um, most rounds these days, including the ammunition which we are using today, being PPU, um, is downloaded specifically just for these rifles because um, obviously you don't want to blow the rifle up due to it being such an old rifle. Uh, but you can, if you make your own ammo or you find loads from Federal or, uh, or Winchester, um, you can get much harder, hotter loads. And what I mean by hotter loads is um, more powder behind the actual projectile itself in order for it to have more velocity downrange. 
um, which obviously increases um, the, the uh, range at which you can shoot if you're doing target shooting, um, or the amount in America, and especially in Europe, um, commonly used on uh, hunting there for uh, large game like elk, moose, um, deer, boar is very popular for this round. It's a very versatile, very pleasant shooting round, unlike that 308. Um, the 308, to some people, I don't find it, but for some people can be a bit um, unwieldy, especially if you have a lighter rifle. So this is a this is a beautiful round to shoot in no matter pretty much any rifle. So when you aim on this, there's a little U-notch on the rear side here, and there's a post at the top. What you want to do is you want to put the post in the middle and aligned with the horizontal top U-notch. So the top of the front sight is it at the top of the U-notch and in the center of the U-notch and that way your Y and your X-axis are aligned. Awesome. That's so nice to fire. It's such smooth. You know, it's hard to believe. How old is it now, Joel? 80, 80 odd years old. Unbelievable. Go for the 500. See the fall of Gatler. Sorry? Seen the fall of Gatler. Do you see it? Yeah. Turn round. Not seen. Left, two targets, low half target. Not seen. Low, one full target, but good, good left and right on the target, just low. Five hundred, the left hand target. Hey legends, I must say, I really, really like this Mauser. It's such a really nice rifle to fire. The um, 308's obviously the 308, big beast of a thing. And it was good, but I really, really enjoy this. It's so nice. It's a comfortable thing to fire. So I got wee arms, doesn't help. But yeah, once you get your eye in on it a bit, it's a pretty good bit of kit. Um, I'm, again, thanks to Joel for bringing it out to and letting us use it. Um, but we'll we'll keep firing another few down range down. Hopefully, we'll get a wee bit better. Joel's already on. I've hit it once or twice, but we'll keep going to see how how we get on at 500 meters on iron sights. But really, really like this lovely rifle. Which one you have? At 500.
So, Joel is now putting the uh, this little lady to bed. I'll have to admit, I was going to say that I really did prefer this to the three away. I liked the three away; it was good. But this was, it was so nice to fire. It was enjoyable. It was really good. I really liked it. So, it is. so um, yeah, awesome, awesome morning. Just shooting rounds down the range at the out in Darwin somewhere. Do you know what I mean? So it's, that's what it's all about. Nice day, we day off work.